Hello everybody and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and I'm here today with a part two of how to make your own tarot boxes. Now in part one, I talked about tuck boxes, um, which is based on this kind of a design. I think we're all pretty familiar with it. And uh, this is a much easier design and it takes less material to make. So if you've never made a tarot box before or you're not sure which design you might wanna try, I suggest you watch that video and follow those instructions, at least to begin with. But if you prefer a two-piece box, that's what we're going to be working on today. So a two-piece box has a separate bottom and top and requires more steps. The cutting out process and the templates are a little bit more complicated. Um, and then the folding and gluing process is also a bit more complicated, but I'm going to walk you through that today. Um, I'll also have a link in the show notes below to um, a web page where you can get templates for how to measure and cut out these shapes that you'll need. Um, the other thing I want to mention uh, that I mentioned in my last video is just a shout out to people that inspired me to make this series. So the first person is Kristen of Over the Moon Academy and her uh, website and her YouTube video will be linked in the show notes below. Um, Kristen showed uh, me and taught me how to make a basic box that has a flip up lid and is made from one piece and I really like the way she explains things. So you can check her video out. And then the other person um, that recently made a video on making uh, two-part boxes out of sturdier materials is Justin Michael. So if you're looking for something that's more robust, potentially more long-lasting, but also requires slightly more specialized materials, you can check out Justin's video, which I'll also link below. So um, just a reminder on the rundown of the materials and the process that you'll need. Um, you will need some kind of sturdy uh, cardstock or um, today we're using office folders, spare office folders. You could also use something like cereal boxes. Um, what I like about using an office grade product is that you can get them in acid-free format. So these are acid-free office folders and that's nice for storing things um, for longevity but you can really use any um, thick, stiff, foldable paper that you have access to. It needs to be fairly robust. The other things you'll need are a ruler and straight edge for both measuring and um, helping you have a guideline um, when you're pressing down uh, your folds. And I'll show you that process here. Um, you will need uh, scissors, which you're gonna use both to cut with and also to score with to make your folds and then you will need um, a pencil to make your marks to transfer your measurements from your deck to uh, to your work uh, material. Um, you will need some kind of glue and my preferred structural glue has been this kind of super glue that's in a gel format so it's um, not as quick drying as the liquid and it gives you a little bit more control over where the glue is going. Um, this has been working well for me. I've also tried craft glue, which I don't love for um, the structural uh, properties, but it is good for applying decoration. So I've been using this to apply my decoration after my box is finished. And I'll talk more about decorating. And then um, toothpicks are handy, I found, especially for the two-piece box, to get glue into tight spaces. So just a plain toothpick. Um, where you can put a tiny amount of glue on the end and really get it down into little cracks and crevices um, so that you don't get glue all over the, where it's not supposed to be. So that's proved to be quite helpful. All right, so let's talk about our templates and what, uh, how we're gonna lay this project out. Now I did talk about measuring your deck um, in the last video I made, but basically what you're going to do is use your ruler and measure your deck down to about the millimeter mark um, in, in the width, the length, and then the thickness of the deck, which you need to measure um, on a flat surface and then use your ruler like this and really get your head down next to it and make sure that you are uh, accurately measuring um, the thickness of your deck because the thickness multiplies over the course of this project um, and will really influence how your box turns out. So this is a little bit more complicated because you have to make a top and a bottom and they have to fit together. So it's instead of one folded piece of paper with a single seam, 
uh, you got you got to make two things, and so it's a it's a good deal more faff and frustration. Um, but a lot of people prefer this style of box, so I wanted you know, and I mean I do too, I guess um, ultimately. But I just don't know if I'm necessarily motivated enough to spend uh, as much time on these, and I would probably rather just crank out a bunch of tuck boxes and be done with it. But that said, I'm happy to um, to give this a shot. So I did some prototyping earlier, um, and actually this box came out just a little bit too small for the Buddhist Pest Tarot, which was its intended uh, its intended deck. So um, I did a little tweaking, and I'll go through that with you. But essentially, there are different ways to construct these top and bottom lids. Basically, you're just going to fold this all up in some way and then apply a judicious amount of, of glue. Um, and by judicious, I mean a very small amount because you don't want glue oozing out um, in this box. And make sure your seams are all really nice and tight and then let them dry. And you do kind of... Um, a top and a bottom that are just slightly different sizes, but it's exactly the same construction method. So let's take a look at the template and I'll walk you through this. So again, um, this is like the unlabeled template. Um, and this is just to show you that uh, these boxes do take a lot more material. So because you're essentially making two boxes almost, um, you are going to end up using your entire file folder and depending on the size of your deck you might actually have to use one file folder for each part of the box. Um, the two decks that I decided to make two-part boxes for are much smaller than standard tarot size. So again here's our reference card and here is our tarot card. So you can see that they're way smaller um, but they're a lot thicker, and that thickness measurement is what gets repeated over and over again. So here we have on each, on the top and the bottom, we have thickness, thickness, width, thickness, thickness, right? Because this part folds in and this part stands up, and then this is the bottom of the box. And then this part folds in, this part stands up, and it's the same way, fold and fold and stand up and fold and fold and stand up. That means that you don't have any um, seams here along the side, so this is completely um, solid and enclosed. You're not going to have cards like trying to slide out of anywhere or moisture or dirt or whatever getting in. This is like a two-part protection. And that's why this has so much surface area that you have to deal with in the two-part box. Now the other um, key element to this as I said before, is to make the top and bottom a little bit larger, or make the top a little bit larger than the bottom, and you want to make both of them a little bit larger than the deck. So remember when I had you measure for the tuck box, I just said add one millimeter to all of your measurements and then just use those. Here I found that once I got all of this paper folded in on itself and glued on the inside of this, it took up quite a bit of space and I couldn't actually fit my deck in here. So, um, and I had added a little bit of room, but not enough. So what I determined was that to get a nice tight fit between the top and bottom, you want a two millimeter difference between the bottom and the top, but you also want to add four millimeters to the measurements of your cards. So that means for the bottom measurement, you're going to add four millimeters to every measurement for the bottom of the box. For the top of the box, you're going to add six millimeters to every measurement. That's four for the deck and two for the top to fit over the bottom. And that does pretty well. I think too much more than two millimeters, maybe three, um, you're going to get a lid that is very, very loose and is just doesn't want to stay on its mated box. So that's not great. Um, but any tighter, you're not going to be able to get that box on there or get the lid on the box. And then the four millimeters, I don't know, you might want to have a little bit more wiggle room inside your box. So maybe you want to have, you know, five or six millimeters for the bottom and then maybe seven or eight millimeters extra for the top. Um, but again, whatever the differential is between the top and the bottom should be about two millimeters to have that lid fitting nicely. So let's look at the more detailed template just for a quick second and I can kind of show you how this all folds together. 
Um, this template is also a bit more complicated in where you have to cut, what you have to remove, and how you're going to apply your glue. So I have this one labeled Budapest top and Budapest bottom so that I can tell which is which and make sure that I've laid out my measurements correctly. You can see that if I line up my pencil lines here, that this deck is just slightly smaller than this one. Um, it's not very much and it may not actually be enough. I haven't cut this out and fitted it yet, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but you're gonna cut out um, a bunch of material from the corners after you take your measurements. And even down into here, you can cut a little bit to make this fold a bit easier. Um, and then you're gonna fold these things up and um, eventually glue them all in place. So once you cut out your extra material um, from here, and again on this template, so you've got your height, you've got your width, and then these are all thicknesses, the thickness, 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 thickness. So that's what it looks like here, and then what you do is you take these two outside parts, you fold them in, and you wanna make sure they're not overlapping at all. If they do overlap a little bit, I would trim them back slightly because you don't want a big wad of material down in this, the interior seam. So then you're gonna fold them up a second time, fold these flappy parts in to make sort of a, a surround there. And then this outer box, folds around and tucks in like this. And then these little wings kind of give some extra surface area for that glue um, to really seal in there. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Now the nice thing is that this kind of pressure fits when you, when you push it together. So before you glue it into place, you can do a dry fit and make sure that your cards are going to fit in there. Um, but do be careful because with this not glued into place, things can bend and catch on each other like they are right now. But once you get a few cards in, then you can get the rest in. And so now you can see this deck, um, it has a little bit of a lip there. So the cards aren't gonna spill out and they have enough room to kind of wiggle around. So they should be fairly easy to get in and out of this box but I do have one card stuck down there. Now it's stuck down there because my paper's wrinkled because it's not glued into place. So let's go ahead and fix that and make sure that this is really gonna work. Now, one thing I mentioned on my last video with the tuck boxes is that if you're gonna continue to augment the fit and finish of this box, it's easier to do that before you um, actually glue it together. So uh, what we want here on the top is to have some little cutouts for our fingers like this. So we want to be able to grab the bottom of the box and remove the lid. Um, so let's do that before we uh, glue this up. So I'm just going to sketch here. And you could use a stencil um, with a circle on it if you want it to be more exact. I'm just going to eyeball it here and then cut this out before we glue it together. All right, so let's get glue in here. Um, I recorded one version of this tutorial where I was trying to glue everything kind of at the same time and realized that that is not very easy to do. So I'm going to be a little more patient and glue one side at a time. We're going to start with this side. And here you can see I didn't have quite enough material um, to make this a full sized uh, flap here all the way down to, to this portion, but that's okay. Um, if we glue this flat, it'll be fine and it won't get caught on anything. So and again, if you want to use a, a slower drying glue, that's fine. Um, just know that you may have to tape this down or put a book weight on it until it's really fully dry before you move on to the next step. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention too is before you start gluing, go ahead and take your straight edge and really press all of your seams that you're going to be folding into three dimensions. So after you've scored and you've measured and you've cut out your template, you want to go through here and really mash with the edge of your ruler and make sure that these folds that are going to be permanent are uh, nice and folded down um, because that'll help your box come out more straight and um, be less difficult for your glue to set up correctly. All right, so there I have my two sides glued in place. So the next step is to glue each of these sides over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first apply glue here to the end flap. 
I'm going to tuck that into place and then I'm going to come in with my toothpick and apply glue on these flaps on the interior. As I come around, I want to make sure that I'm really getting everything tucked in properly so that this sets up in the right shape. And again, pressing on, for example, this seam here before I glue is helpful to get it to fall right into place the way that I want. Okay, that seems to be holding. I'm going to actually just give that a chance to set up and come over here to this side and glue it. Just zooming in a little bit so you can see a little bit more clearly. everything right into place, making sure that this box is square on the end as the glue sets up. And again, you can use a removable masking tape like washi tape or painter's tape. If you are using a slower drying glue, you could tape this into place on a few um, different planes of this box and then leave it to dry for a couple of hours if you needed to do that. But this fast setting glue seems to be working okay. All right, now I'm gonna go back over on this side and just glue down these flaps. So let me open up a flap so you can see that hopefully in there. It's a little hard to see, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is take my toothpick and apply some glue in here, um, or I might just apply a dot of glue and then spread it around with the toothpick and then hold it into place like that, like that. I'm going to do that on each side and then flip it over and do it on each side on the other end. All right, so here's my flap. I got a big old gob of glue on there. seal this up and you know if you get a little super glue on your finger it's okay um, it's not the end of the world to just be crunchy for a day or two um, but if you glue your fingers together there are solvents uh, that can actually <laughs> help you there um, I think acetone will work uh, to release super glue um, but there are other things that you can get so don't hurt yourself don't like rip your skin off if you get glue on yourself Apply a little bit more glue in this corner. There we go. And then use the toothpick to carefully spread that around. Try not to get too much on the outside of the box. And I do have a little squeeze out happening, so I'm going to use my toothpick to get rid of it. And that looks pretty good not to glue myself to my box that looks pretty good so I'll finish um, gluing this and then the other side and then we'll come back and take a look at the finished box all right so it's time for the big reveal um, before we do that I wanted to mention again that for decorating you can use either uh, materials that might have come with your deck in this case these historic decks come with a wrapper as they would have back in the 1600s um, and so I just photocopied this uh, this wrapper for this deck because it had great graphics and it will remind me what's in the box. But if your deck doesn't come with any kind of pre-made graphics, one thing you can do is just photocopy some of the favorite cards that you might have. So this is for the Rosenwald deck. 
And I just took some photocopies to make the decoration on the outside. Um, this is especially a nice thing to do if you don't feel very artistic, if you don't feel like drawing something yourself. So let's look at our finished boxes. Here's that Budapest tarot with the nice wrapper all the way around it. And again, I just used a photocopy and then cut it down to size. It doesn't fit perfectly on here because of course the box had to be bigger than the deck. So um, that is one consideration. If you want to cover your entire box, you might have to blow this up, enlarge it you know, by 5% or so, um, so that you get the entire box covered. But I'm pretty happy with that. I used part of it on the very back. And then you want to make sure when you're decorating the sides and the bottom that you're just decorating the sides and the bottom of the lid, not the part that the cards sit in. That is something that can be um, easily done by mistake if you're not paying attention. So when you put your decoration on for the two-piece box, you're mostly decorating the lid. But I think this turned out well. This is a single piece. I laid it on here, folded it the way that I wanted it to go. And then you can see here, I just kind of folded it like a present, like you would wrap a box with wrapping paper and glued it all into place and then cut out the little places for uh, the thumb uh, the thumb holding and then took that extra piece that was attached here and just cut it out and put it on the bottom so that that turned out pretty well this deck did not come with any kind of uh, decorative paper or other um, material that I could use to decorate the box but so I just used some of my favorite cards. This is probably my favorite devil card, uh, at least of the moment. Um, so he's on here. And then this deck uniquely has uh, women uh, in the, as the pages of coins and cups. So I chose one of those cards for the bottom. Again, only decorating the top. And then I used uh, each of the four suits to decorate the ends and the sides. So we've got the coins here, the cups up here, um, I've got a sword, the Ace of Swords on this side, and then the Ace of Wands over here. So even though this doesn't have a title on it, just from the artwork I can tell what this is when it's sitting on my shelf. And again, you've got that two-piece, um, very tight-fitting lid, um, so you kind of have to open slowly and close uh, slowly. Um, but yeah, these, these lids fit very well. They're not just gonna slide out, so I can kind of jiggle them even with the full force of the box in there. Um, that's working well. One tip I did notice is that once you get your decoration glued on here, you may have some corners that want to peel back a little bit. So you might have to come in with a little supplemental glue and your toothpick again, and just touch up your glue job so that all of the corners and things on here are fitting very tightly and flush and not um, sticking out so that's my last tip for you but I hope you enjoyed these tutorials and I hope you'll make some boxes if you do please again leave a comment here um, with either a link to your video or tag me on social media I'm at water child tarot and until next time be well and I'll see you very soon bye